Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I'm still not actually home home. I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado at the moment. I'm actually planning to try to see if I can put together some sort of meetup, although it's the holidays, so I certainly don't really expect that, and I'll be taking my son to go uh, snowboarding here relatively soon. Well, actually, just in a few hours, but before that, need to give you guys a bulletin on what's happening on the ISS what's happening with Soyuz. I was uh, awakened at about 2 a.m. Uh, when I was still in the UK um, with the circumstances uh, surrounding the leak that had happened uh, on the Soyuz. I actually put out a quick bulletin on it um, within minutes after it was reported, but I also plan promised rather an update, and that's something I haven't actually been able to provide primarily because I've been crazy busy with all of the transitioning between Europe and here, but also because we really didn't have a lot of solid information as to what really occurred. Since then, the Russians have engaged in a pretty thorough investigation of what's happened up to this point, and they have their report. I'm not saying that I necessarily trust it, but at the same time, I do feel that it's very likely that this report was pretty accurate. And what this report indicates, that there could be some very bad news, not only for the future of the ISS, but for any other space station that establishes itself in low Earth orbit in the future. <laughs> On December 14th, as most of us know, the cameras on the ISS revealed a significant leak coming from the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft. It came from an external coolant loop that actually exposed the entire coolant system to the vacuum of space, and this leaked for hours before it finally ran out of coolant to leak. This, of course, is a significant problem. Without a proper coolant system on board, the spacecraft is vulnerable vulnerable to the heat and the icy cold of space, which could impact its computers, especially if it were trying for a re-entry. In my opinion, and honestly I think in the opinion of just about everybody involved, they really shouldn't try to risk astronauts on this spacecraft. They're going to need a replacement. Now, after examining the leak for a considerable amount of time, utilizing cameras on board the European robotic arm, the Russians determined that the leak was coming from a hole no bigger than 0.8 millimeters in diameter. Absolutely tiny, and yet look at all the trouble that it caused. Some people were quick to criticize Russian technology, the fact that the Soyuz had a problem a couple of years ago with another leak, and stating that this problem was simply reoccurring, and by the way, the Russians blamed NASA astronauts for the previous leak. However, I don't subscribe to these notions, and let me tell you why. The Soyuz has a very long, and when I say very long, more than half a century record of reliability. This is an extremely solid spacecraft, so the notion that they would have two leaks developing in this spacecraft in the space of less than two years seems to be a huge coincidence, or assuming that somehow the equipment and technology has developed some significant flaws. Now, that could be the case. They could have an ongoing manufacturing problem with the components, but I really doubt it. I think the Soyuz has a high enough reliability record to dismiss that possibility, and I think it's more likely that this leak was created by what the Russians say created it. An impact with a tiny piece of space debris or a tiny meteoroid associated with the Geminid meteor shower. Although, honestly, I don't think it was a micrometeoroid. My money is on a piece of space debris. And although the Russians seem to be leaning more towards the meteoroid solution, that's for very predictable reasons. Because if it was a collision with a piece of space debris, it was very likely that the Russians themselves created this space debris 
Party in the first place, and it's also worth noting that the ISS was in a 24-hour sunlight orbit for a few hours or days at the time, which was the first time that station had ever traveled through this orbit, which means if there was some undetected debris in that particular orbit, this would have been the first time that it would have encountered it. Also, theoretically, being in a sunlight orbit for that long might have created a problem with the coolant valves and lines, but I really doubt it. Once again, I think it is far more likely that this is a piece of debris that the Russians themselves may have created, or perhaps somebody else, but it really doesn't matter. I think that this is just a symptom of the ongoing crisis in low Earth orbit, and the consequences of this particular incident are pretty damn significant. Right now, if the ISS encounters any sort of emergency or collides with a larger piece of space debris that requires an evacuation, at least three astronauts will almost certainly perish because the Soyuz in question was the critical lifeboat for the ISS that would have been required in order to evacuate at least three of the personnel on board. There isn't enough room in the Crew Dragon to accommodate everybody, which means I would say that there's a good chance that the astronauts have already decided which of them are going to be able to escape and which of them are going to die should the ISS encounter some sort of disaster over the next few weeks. Now, granted, this is very unlikely, but nevertheless, it could happen, and if it did, it would almost certainly be fatal, and this sort of scenario is simply unacceptable, but it's something that could very well happen over and over again in low Earth orbit as we continue to put more garbage into this region of space. Now, the Russians are putting their heads together in order to come up with some sort of solution. It might be possible to repair the Soyuz, although honestly, I really doubt that. I think it's probably going to be necessary to send up a replacement Soyuz capsule, which will require at least 45 days, but that's less time than it would take to send up another Crew Dragon. So it is the best solution, although there's a problem with that as well. Even though the Soyuz can technically dock with the ISS on its own, it's not really designed to. It requires at least one cosmonaut in order to be able to handle the docking maneuvers. If that were the case, you would still have one person stranded on the ISS in the case of an emergency. This whole situation has demonstrated the weak points in the ISS's evacuation strategy. And as time goes on, I think this problem is going to get even worse. If it wasn't even caused by space debris, but rather by faulty equipment, Two incidents with faulty equipment involving the Soyuz suggest that the Russians are not going to be able to hold up their end of the agreement until 2030. And as I said, if it was debris, this is a problem that's going to cause issues with other stations in the future. Orbital Reef, Star Lab, and even the Chinese space station are going to be vulnerable to these kinds of incidents in the future, and it's not just incidents involving the stations themselves. Had the Soyuz taken this impact while it was trying to re-enter the atmosphere, that might have resulted in the loss of the spacecraft and everybody on board. This is a problem that needs to be taken very seriously, and there are solutions in the works right now, being primarily led by the UK Space Agency agency and the European Space Agency. I have videos regarding the solution to this problem linked at the end of this video. In the meantime, we'll continue to monitor the situation and update you as the crisis develops. Please subscribe to this channel. Please like this video. Also, check out the description for various ways to keep this content coming. And as always, stay angry about space.